Hey guys, thanks for watching. Today I'm taking a look at the Poppy GB35 Gorion Chogokan ST. So today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Um, I've been looking at a lot of Diaclone releases, um, some new, some vintage. Um, I really wanted to have a look at um, a couple of the Poppy figures uh, in my collection. Um, and this one being, as many of you will recognize as Voltron, um, has a special place, I guess, in my collection. Uh, I grew up watching Voltron. Um, this guy, it came out, Voltron came out in 83. Um, the Japanese version, um, Gorion, um, which refers to the five lions that combine uh, was 81. So I was four at the time um, when Voltron first came out um, and I kind of grew up watching um, watching the show and that kind of has obviously heavily influenced uh, my interest, my collection uh, and so on. So I'm really excited to take a look at this guy today. So I won't go into too much detail here about the history of Gorion and Voltron. Um, I do want to do a review in future of the GB36, the DX version, which is kind of the grail of um, Chogo collecting, I guess, for, for kids of the 80s. Um, so if you're not familiar um, with the Poppy Chogokan range, um, I guess they're kind of the original um, vintage kind of die-cast robot, um, I guess from the, the 70s and 80s, um, all made in Japan. Um, as you can see, uh, he's the ST, um, not the DX. So um, with most of the Poppy Chogokan releases, they did an ST and a DX. Um, the ST uh, is obviously a lot smaller, um, they don't combine, so the first thing you'll kind of notice is um, when you look at the pieces, they don't come apart, it's just a kind of all-in-one figure. Um, but this was obviously a way for um, Poppy um, and their parent company Bandai to get a cheaper figure into market, so kids that couldn't afford the, the bigger combining um, version, um, which in the case of Gorion was the GB36, the DX. Um, they could still have something that was super cool. To be honest, they were pretty expensive back in the day. I think it was like maybe the equivalent of $80 US um, in the early 80s for a DX. So it's a lot, a lot of money. Um, whereas I think these guys might have been like under $20 or something like that. Um, so more accessible and then kind of every kid could have a Gorion or a Voltron to play with. Okay, so taking a look at the packaging, um, the Poppy Chogokan ST range has a very kind of standard formula in terms of this kind of silvery gray border. Um, but then each release had its own kind of custom graphics and custom kind of feel to it. So it was a really nice kind of consistency um, without being too formulaic. Um, and this one's no different. So um, a lot of vibrant colors obviously coming from and themed from the, the five lion colors of Gorion. Um, and then on the back, you have this fantastic um, kind of perspective anime um, drawing sketch of Gorion with a cutaway kind of showing the detail. Uh, I guess, you know, what, what would have been there um, in terms of the mechanics of the robot to make him work like that. So a lot of kind of fun for kids to kind of get an idea of, you know, what, what could have gone on with this guy with such a, a huge mech of, of the scale of Gorion or Voltron. So as I mentioned, being that um, the ST, um, he doesn't have a lot of kind of posability, playability with him. Um, he doesn't combine, which is the, the kind of the big thing to get your head around a, a Voltron or, or Gorion that doesn't um, combine, doesn't come apart um, into the individual lions. Um, but once you kind of, you, you know, you take it for what it is, um, he's a really fun figure. Really, really cute, um, I guess, being, you know, he's a smidge over 15 centimeters tall or 17 centimeters tall if you, if you count his wings. Um, he does, for that small size, he does have a fair amount of weight though. Um, his torso and his legs are all die cast. Um, the arms and head are just uh, molded plastic. Um, but uh, as I said, like a lot of weight in hand, um, a lot of really nice vibrant um, color details. So the plastic parts are all kind of colored plastic, but the, the torso and the legs and the, I think the thighs are also metal possibly. Um, they're all painted or plated in the case of the chrome. Um, so really, really nice looking, looks fantastic on the shelf, this guy. In terms of articulation, again, kind of limited with what you can do with this guy. Um, his arms rotate. Um, his head will turn a little bit uh, in terms of left and right, not up and down. 
Um, his thighs will move and his knee joints move as well. Um, but it's kind of weird in that, you know, obviously you can't pose him in that fashion. He won't stand up. Um, so you can play with him that way. Um, and it's kind of cool that he does move, but at the end of the day, um, every time you sit him back down, he's got to be in this kind of 80s neutral pose, um, which looks fantastic, um, but it kind of limits the, the playability, I guess, for, for this particular toy. So as with a lot of the ST toys that didn't do a lot um, in terms of playability, the, the big showpiece was always the rocket punch. Um, and this guy um, has an extra party trick in that he has the rocket kick or futto misaru as well. So um, all four of the lion heads um, can fire. And like all the, um, the toys of that era coming out of Japan, um, there's quite a lot of spice on the, the projectile as well. So um, while you'd have to be pretty unlucky to be blinded by it, um, it definitely would hurt if it got you in the eye. So um, just be careful. And I guess that's um, one of the reasons that when these toys were licensed to Matchbox in the US and when they were released internationally, um, they did remove that firing mechanic um, just to kind of keep it safe. Um, so that's one reason, I guess, that the, the Poppy um, is quite a collectible uh, in that it still has that feature. You also get a couple of accessories in the box. So he has his big oversized chrome sword um, that obviously is synonymous with Voltron. And then there's also the shield, the pointed shield. Um, and they're really nice, just chromed plastic, um, but a good fun detail to play with. So you also get this full color flip out booklet, um, which kind of shows you detail on each character within the series. There's this pulpy information sheet. And then you also get an instruction sheet just showing you how the rocket punch and, and the wings flip out and so on. As far as this, um, my example goes, um, it's in really, really good shape. Um, you can see, if you look really, really closely, there's some of the chrome details missing on the red line and the green line here. But other than that, it's, it's pretty much all there. Um, and it's a good point that um, this guy being the ST and not the DX um, is pretty easy to pick up at a, at a good rate. Um, the DX has become quite expensive to find um, nowadays. Um, the ST you can pick up easily for like under $100 um, in decent condition. So it's definitely a cool little piece that I recommend checking out if you are into Chogokin figures, um, if you're into Voltron or Gorion, um, he's definitely a cool little addition. And here, just to give you a sense of scale and I guess a bit of nostalgia as well, I'm just showing him uh, next to the GB36DX version of Gorion. So you can kind of see this is the, you know, the original and I guess the grail of Gorion uh, and Voltron collecting. Um, just see the two figures together and, and again, see how cute uh, this guy kind of is. Um, when he's next to a, a, a regular kind of size figure. I definitely want to do a video um, down the track showing the GB36, but um, at this point I just, I thought the GB35, the ST was a really good addition to show. Again, super, super cute. Um, I really love this guy. He's great on display. Um, really, really fun rocket punch, rocket kick. So that's the Poppy GB35 uh, Gorion Chogokin ST. I did want to share him with you and kind of showcase him because he's a figure that doesn't get a huge amount of love um, compared to the DX version. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any comments or feedback, please post below. Um, if you do want to catch upcoming videos, including the GB36, please subscribe. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you next time.